So the bottom line is, sooner or later, no matter what is carved in stone on that piece of paper, you have to see it as not being carved in stone. It is not the law of Joshua laid down by Moses. It is a suggestion in a shadow like Peter Pan, and you're trying to chase the shadow and see if you can sew it to your toes to keep it around. And you can put it anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. Now, using ABC, you have to learn 17 spellings of the major scale. And to memorize 17 spellings takes about four or five years. You know, think about it. How long did it take you to memorize the times tables up to 12 when you were in fifth and sixth grade? Did anyone here do it in less than two years? <laughs> we have a math genius. He's still working on it. Me too. As a matter of fact, I do what most adults do. Because I learned the time tables by rote, and I got older, and you start Alzheimer's sets in, and you have these kind of senior moments, I've developed a crutch. The crutch is, if you ask me, what's five, what's uh, six times five, I'll tell you right off the gate, it's 30. But if you ask me, what's five times six, then I have to think of the six times tables, and I go, six times six is 36, minus six is 30. So if you ask me the same question, in reverse, I use a whole different chain of logic <laughs> to arrive at the same answer. So five, six times five is 30, but five times six is six sixes is 36 minus six, 30. And that's what happens with scales, folks. You memorize the 17 scales, you get older, you don't use those scales. A lot of the scales don't get used, like the C-sharp scale, for instance. Nobody learns to spell that. The, uh, G, the uh, G sharp scale, the G flat scale, used alternately sometimes, but everyone writes the B flat scale and no one writes the A sharp scale. So the problem is, is all the black notes on the piano, those five black notes on the piano, they have two names each, so that's 10 names, and then you have the five, seven white notes, so that's 17 spellings. Even though there's only 12 notes, there's 17 spellings because five of those notes had two names. And what people do is they learn to spell the easy spelling, like the B-flat scale, which is easy to spell, and they ignore the A-sharp scale. Well, guess what? The truth is, one is not any harder than the other. And if you do it by number, it doesn't matter. You just throw the whole thing off and just throw it away. <laughs> Don't matter. So now, let's get back to, I was showing last week how the most important thing in doing the scale is memorizing this pattern. And this pattern, you'll see, starts out 1, 3, 5, 7 with the odd numbers. And there are four odd numbers. And then you'll notice there are three even numbers. So already, because there's seven, we've got this yin-yang happening. Half a dozen on one six of another, as my mother used to say. Right? So you've got this pattern, 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6. And this would be if you were to label all the lines on the staff, or if you were to label all the spaces, either one, this pattern keeps showing up over and over and over and over and over and over and over, ad infinitum ad nauseum. So it turns out this is your magic decoder key, which is all you need to figure out how to read music. This is it. This is it. The other thing is you have to learn how to do this with your right brain, not your left brain, and you learn to do it not by counting, which is a left brain process, you do it by looking at the thing and estimating the size. And if I guess the size of something, I'm using my right brain, not my left brain. And if, at first, it's a guess, then later it becomes an estimate. And then later that estimate becomes 100% accurate. And there's the key to learning to read music using the right brain, which does not interfere with the emotional process. So if you're looking at it as a number code, and you're doing it with your right brain, you can read music and play with feelings. You'll find that a lot of classically trained pianists, when they play something, they play what we call cold or dead, straight. They're counting, like the grandma sitting there, you know, the blue feather grandma sitting there with a ruler ready to slap their wrist and they get a note wrong. And they play like a MIDI program, a machine, mechanically. And a lot of guitar players read tablature. And because they read tablature, they're memorizing the song mechanically. So they play mechanically. And all that mechanical stuff uses so much of the left brain to process 
that what happens is you're all caught up in your mind. How can you express what's happening in your heart with the music when you're all caught up in this mind game that I call the choo 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 the staff has <coughs> five lines and six spaces, unlike the world always tells you five and four, they're wrong. There's five lines, and then if you count the outside, there's one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. That's enough to notate 11 notes. Okay? So right there, two octaves right, is 15 notes, roughly. So you can almost do anything with just this much staff. Okay. Thing, how do I know where one is? Well, one can be anywhere on this. One could be this spot here on that line there. Or the number one could be down there on that space. Or the number one could be up here on that line. It could be any, any line or any space anywhere on the system. Okay. So how do we know that? That's what the key signature tells us. The key signature explains to us where a number is at on one of those lines and spaces, so we can then use this thing to decode the whole staff. So I'll show you how it works. If I have one of these gizmos, and I put it on that line, and that gizmo is called a sharp, it turns out that all sharps, when they're added into the scale, are always added in, in the same position. They always come in as the seventh step of that scale. So do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. That's the note that's being added by sharps. So if this is the number seven, can't I now use this wheel to number all the rest of the lines? Here's seven. That's seven. So if I go down, I'm going to five. I go down to the next line, three. Down to the next line, one. Go down to the next line, six. If I want to go to a ledger line below, that would be 4. And if I want to go to a ledger line above, that would be the number 2. And you can see right there, I have now numbered that just enough to be able to decode any music that might fall on that staff. And we've also learned that with that sharp in that position giving us the number 7, the number 1 lands right on this line right here. Now the interesting thing is, the spaces have the same pattern. I know that between 4 and 6 is a 5, right? So let's take this pattern. If that space is a 5, then the next space up would be 7, which is between 6 and 1. The next space up, right, from that would be 2, 4, 6, 1, and then above it, three. So now I use the exact same pattern to show me every space. And you see I've just now decoded this thing completely. And the truth is I don't need the blue part. All I need is the black part. Because once I've got that in my head, I can figure out what's between the number three and five. <laughs> okay. Now the thing would be to feel this to feel this, and we'll get to that in a second. But let's say I've got a song, and the song starts out right here, then it goes like that, and it goes like that. Okay? So, with this thing decoded the way I have it right now, the first note is what number? G. No, it's not G, because I have no clef. That could be the bass clef, it could be the alto clef, it could be soprano clef, it could be tenor clef. It could be any one of 152 clefs. So there are no ABCs. We don't need them. As a matter of fact, I'll show you how to use ABCs. Well, if you've got F sharp and that's a 7, it's a G. Not an F sharp. <laughs> that's an F sharp if this were a G clef. Right. But if it were a bass clef, that wouldn't be a G on that point. So okay. yeah, just go with me. So that's 7. So there's 1. So that first note is a third. 
or three. And how can I tell? In my mind, if I imagine that I have a note under it on that line, I can see the distance of a third, can't I? Can you see that distance? From here to there is a third. If under here I draw a note on the line, on the home row, I can see this distance here is a fourth. And if I draw a line under this note here, I can see the distance there is a fifth. See what I'm getting at? If in my mind I keep drawing a note on this line, this zero line, underneath every single note, then I will be able to actually physically see the size of that interval. 